JBR3 Collector back doing another tier ranking video. This time, um, we're doing a comic book themed tier ranking video. Um, doing, doing a lot of action figure ones in a row, so let's do a comic book one. Um, now I think about it, I should have done a Doctor Strange one. But, whatever. Um, it's the Hulk's 60th anniversary this year, as well as Spider-Man, and as well as Thor. So I decided this week, for the comic um, tier ranking, we would do a Hulk villains tier ranking. Two weeks ago, I did Spider-Man villains tier ranking. Um, Spider-Man's villains are a lot more iconic than the Hulks are. Um, so there's going to be a lot less S-tier villains in this video compared to the Spider-Man one. But let's get started. So first off here, character who's not really a villain. Um, it's just, it's a Hulk video, and how can you have a Hulk video without including Rick Jones, you know? So this is A-Bomb. Now, maybe if you're Red Hulk, you consider A-Bomb a villain. <laughs> but uh, A-Bomb was killed by the Red Hulk. Um, so, and again, he's not actually a villain, but he's a really, like, prominent Hulk character. I'm going to put A-Bomb in, um, in B-tier, and you'll see why he's still, even though he's not really a Hulk villain, he's in um, he's still essential to a, or maybe not essential, but near essential for a Hulk um, collection. Um, I'm hoping my tier ranking videos do help you to decide what figures, what characters uh, will best fit in a collection um, of that specific character. So, next up, this is alphabetic order, by the way, is one of very few Hulk um, S tier Hulk villains would be the Abomination. Abomination is one of the Hulk's oldest villains. He was the villain in the Incredible Hulk movie. Um, the Abomination is a kind of a big deal uh, Marvel character for the Hulk specifically, and is a, a higher, higher tier villain in general. Um, I'd probably put him like, in the entire Marvel Universe in general, maybe an A, possibly a B. Uh, probably would be more likely. But yeah, so the Abomination, definitely Hulk's, one of Hulk's greatest enemies, uh, easily S tier. Um, I think there's going to be no argument over that. Then we have the Absorbing Man, who you could argue is more of a Thor villain, but honestly, he fights Hulk and Thor almost equally. And in most other forms of media, he is usually depicted as a Hulk villain. Um, so... Absorber Man, I'm going to put it in A tier. You might remember he was also in the Spider-Man tier ranking video as well. So, Next up is Agamemnon. I think that's how you say his name. Um, from the Pantheon. A team Hulk was on in the early 90s. Um, Agamemnon was like the leader of the team, but then he like um, he like turned on all of them and ended up being a bad guy. He's like an old mystical wizard type of guy. So I'm assuming, I think that's what he is. I know he's like old and wise and like uh, some kind of powerful character like that, but he's um, not a super high ranking Hulk villain, but he's not going to be towards the bottom of this list at least, so he'll go C. Then we have Agent Pratt. This is from a, like, early 2000s run on the Hulk, um, which I've heard people just really dislike that run for Hulk, and a character that has not made very many appearances outside of that, so he's going to go F tier. Um, then we have Ajax from the Pantheon as well. Um, honestly, the Pantheon attacked the Hulk before he joined the Pantheon, or it could be the other way around. But yeah, he's um, definitely not a very important Hulk character at all, and he's, he just looked really cool with his big armored suit. Um, I think I'll put Ajax in a C tier, I guess, for now. Um, then we have... Apocalypse, who you know is an X-Men villain. If, you, if this is an X-Men list, he'd probably be an S-tier. Um, but this is a Hulk list, and if you don't know, the Hulk and Apocalypse had a pretty decent fight back in the early 90s, I want to say, mid-90s, and Hulk ended up losing and became um, the horseman of war for Apocalypse. And uh, so that's a pretty big run. Um, I'll probably put Apocalypse, because he's not really a Hulk villain, and they don't really have a whole ton of interactions. Let's put Apocalypse in, in C-tier. Then we have um, Aquan or something like that, Aquan, Aquan. Um, a very minuscule Hulk villain. I think he probably had like this, maybe this, just this one appearance, probably. Maybe he appeared in a Namor comic. I have no idea. But he's not a very big character, so he's going to go F tier. Then we have Armageddon, who, um, yeah, another character Hulk had a big run with in the mid 90s. Um, I can't remember the name of their planet, but it's like, it's almost like Trojan. It's like Troy Jan or something like that. Um, Armageddon was a pretty big deal villain for Hulk at the time, or like a nice big adversary for him, a big strong guy to form Hulk to fight. So I'll put Armageddon in B tier. Um, yeah, I think he's a pretty big deal. Then we have a character I personally just learned about because of a custom group on Facebook. Um, this is Banger Mick Crusher. It's like a, a mixture of Hulk and the Thing combined together into some big super giant monster. And I'll put him in F. Then we have By Beast, who um, almost had a Marvel Legends figure back in the day. But honestly, it's a good thing they didn't make that figure because it would have been really undersized. By Beast is larger than the Hulk, like significantly, large, significantly larger than the Hulk. So maybe nowadays we can get him. It's like maybe a deluxe figure. Um, you need him on a body bigger than the Hulk. Um, probably bigger than the Juggernaut as well. But Bybees is not a big deal character, so he might not be worth that for Hasbro on the radar. Um, but he will go in A tier, because he is a fairly popular, as far as Hulk villains go, character. Next up is a character who I believe is really just a Red Hulk villain, not so much a, a normal Hulk villain. Um, this is Black Fog. Has not made very many appearances at all. Um, so I'm probably going to put him in... He is, he is pretty badass looking though, but he'll go F tier. So after Black Fog, we go back to X-Men villains who happen to have fought the Hulk a few times. We have the Blob. You know, the immovable Blob versus the strongest man on Earth, the Incredible Hulk. Um, honestly, a pretty pretty fun uh, interaction there, I, I think, with the Blob. Um, now, yeah, Blob hasn't fought Hulk enough times to really consider like a huge part of his rogues gallery, but it's always a really fun interaction when they have faced each other. So um, 
I think for that, I'll put Blob in B tier. Um, maybe that's a little bit crazy, but I think Blob um, is worth that. Anyway, we have no one in D tier yet. Um, I do think I'll put Ajax down in D tier. And then maybe, you can, maybe Blob can go down to C tier. How about that? I think that's more fitting. I, don't, I think Armageddon's more of a threat to the Hulk than the Blob was. So but Then we have Boomerang, who is, you know, some people say he's more of a Spider-Man villain. I was first introduced to the Boomerang as a Hulk villain. So um, I think Boomerang's a fairly decent um, adversary of the Hulk. And I put, I'll put uh, Boomerang in B tier. Um, next is Brian Banner. This is Bruce Banner's father, who he's more of a, uh, you know, a mental manipulation type of villain. Not like by power wise, just because he's, he's Bruce Banner's father. It's his fault that Bruce Banner has all these different different multiple personalities and stuff. Um, so just because of his impact on the character, I'll put him in A tier. But as an actual villain, he doesn't actually do a whole lot like, as a super villain because he's not really a super villain. But just the impact he's had on Bruce Banner's life has really um, made him a big deal. Um, then we have Captain Axis. This is a Nazi super soldier who got shrunk down and is in the, like, the microverse. Um, he fought the Hulk back in, I want to say the 60s. Could be the 70s. Um, yeah, definitely not a very important character at all. But he may have been more of an impact than everyone else in F. Just because D's pretty empty. I could put him in D for now. But he made, I think he's probably an F. Yeah, he's definitely an F. <laughs> I just feel bad. D tier is so empty. Then we have um, Captain Omen, who is another, like, really, like, unremarkable character. So let's put him in, in F. Then we have uh, the Circus of Crime and, and the Ringmaster. You know, the Ringmaster, like, it has that uh, hat, the mental manipulation hat. And the Circus of Crime, the other, other criminal circus people who work with him. Um, and they fought the Hulk several times back in the day. Um, I'll put the Circus of Crime and the Ringmaster in B tier, I think. Yeah. Um... That they've had pretty good interactions with the Hulk, and honestly, I want a Ringmaster figure to be bad. I can pass on like the rest of the Circus of Crime, but the Ringmaster himself would be a great um, action figure. Then we have Clay Quartermain, um, Shield Agent. Which, if you have a Marvel Legends collection, you know, if you, if you have the old uh, Ronin figure that has that Hawkeye, that Clint Barton head, uh, that Clint Barton looks a lot like Clay Quartermain to me. I use that for my Shield display. And but anyways, Clay Quartermain, he's like the Shield liaison who's in charge of the Hulkbuster unit, um, Hulkbuster section of Shield, anyways. So he's not really a villain; he's just doing his job. But still, I mean, he's uh, an antagonist for the Hulk. So. But I'll, he's not like a higher tier antagonist. I'll still put him in C. Um, after after Clay Quartermain, we have Colonel John Ambruster, who another he's another guy who's a Hulkbuster unit guy. Um, no one really talks about him at all, so I'll put him in D. I know of him, but he's not a huge big deal character. Here's the Corruptor, who um, is a lot like a Purple Man. Basically, he can make you do um, whatever he wants you to do. So he's had the Hulk. He's like corrupted the Hulk and had him do like all kinds of criminal activity for him in the past. Happened several times, I believe. Um, but yeah, he's not a huge he's not a huge Hulk deal Hulk villain, but he's faced Hulk plenty of times. Um, and he's had a pretty good impact on his life, so I'll put him in C tier. After the Corruptor, we have the Dark Crawler, who's also called the Night Crawler back in the day. But after the X Men introduced Night Crawler, they changed the name to the Dark Crawler. And Dark Crawler is not a huge deal character again; another like, not one off, but almost one off character. So I'll put him in D tier. Um, he's more important than everyone else in F tier, but he's not like a character that's gonna get a toy anytime soon or anything like that. Um, then we have Devil Hulk, who I heard was a big deal in the Immortal Hulk story. I was not a fan of Immortal Hulk. I know, call me crazy. Um, I've got a lot of hate for that, actually, because I didn't like my Mortal Hulk. Um, another one of Hulk's personalities caused by his father and the abuse his father gave him. Um, I'm sure other people would rank Devil Hulk pretty high. Um, I'm going to put Devil Hulk in, um, in D, personally, though, because I'm not a huge um, Immortal Hulk fan, and I think uh, it's a really overrated story, but it's probably going to get me a lot of dislike in this video because of that, so, um, yeah, sorry. Then we have Doctor Doom, who was also my Spider-Man list. You know, Doom just fights everybody in the Marvel Universe. He's the, he's the, the big bad guy of the Marvel Universe. Um, I believe Doom was, part, uh, was partially responsible for why uh, She-Hulk is, is around. I know that was the case in the 90s cartoon. I can't remember if that was the case in the comics. I'm pretty sure it was, though. Um, but yeah, Doom. I'll put Doom in C tier as well, because he's not really like a Hulk villain. He's faced Hulk a lot of times, but he's not like a specific Hulk villain. We have Dr. Octopus, who just like Doom. He's faced Hulk a few times. He's faced Doom less than... He's faced Hulk less than Doom has. Um, but he's a really standout in a Sinister... Was it Sinister War? No, um, Return of the Sinister Six? Something like that. Early 90s. Um, and he had like adamantium tentacles, and he, and he whooped the Hulk. And that was like a really like unbelievable situation there but the doc ock for a hulk villain or hulk collection i'll put him in d because he doesn't really he doesn't really belong in a hulk collection at all doc samson however does doc samson i'll put in a tier he's not really a villain but he is a guy who's had to fight hulk lots and lots of times and and it makes him an antagonist for the hulk um hulk's one of those characters that fights lots of other heroes so you'll see several other heroes on this list um, but doc samson he appeared in a hulk comic he's primarily a hulk character he's fought hulk lots of times um i think he's a very like important member of the um of the hulk's uh, gallery of characters then we have, I can't even say this guy's name, Dr. Skirbus or something like that. I'm putting him in F because I, no, I don't know if, I know nothing about him. We have Fin Fang Foom, who I would argue is more of an Iron Man villain or maybe Fantastic Four character because he was a monster island. Like that. Um, but yeah, Fin Fang Foom, really cool character. One of the coolest Marvel monsters. Um, and he was the builder figure of a Hulk builder figure way back in 2007, 2008, something like that. Um, hope we get a new giant Haslab Fin Fang Foom soon. But for Hulk villains, I'll put Fin Fang Foom in C tier as well because he's fought in plenty of times, but he's not a huge deal Hulk character. 
And then we have, um, this is a two for one. This is Flux and General John Riker, uh, another uh, Hulk Buster guy. Um, he, he injected one of his uh, guys with gamma radiation and turned him into a Hulk, but even uglier than the Hulk. So he's a bad guy, right? Um, that's a thing that's been done so many times with the Hulk. I mean, it's done with Abomination, done with, uh, anyone else on this list? I mean, Doc Samson, the Hulk, uh, gamma radiated guy. Um, a bomb, um, I don't think anyone else on this list yet. I think Flux is actually lucky his name starts so early on because uh, it gets really redundant later on with that. But um, yeah, he's not a... I'll put him in D because I don't think anyone even remember, re remembers Flux. So this next character is a really cool character. His name is Fragment. He was only ever made one appearance. But he fought the Hulk and he was, he just he whooped the Hulk in their, in their encounter. Or did he? Because um, he could have all just been a fragment of the Hulk's imagination. The Hulk imagined all that. And that was, I think that's a really fun like, concept there. So Fragment, because of that... I'm going to put Fragment in C tier, which is really high for a character who only has one appearance. So I think that's a really cool, interesting story. I love a, I love, I love this character now that I heard about him. Um, if he's even a character, who knows? Then we have Gargoyle, the Hulk's first villain. Um, now, Gargoyle, you, you think he died pretty early on, but um, he did give... He, he didn't give birth, but he may, helped make another really important Hulk antagonist later on. Since he's Hulk's first villain, I'll put him in B. Um, but he, yeah, he's uh, not nearly as impactful as... Uh, as his son is. So then we have, this is a super mandroid, but this inside the super mandroid is Glenn Talbot, uh, another one of the Hulkbusters. Maybe not the premier Hulkbuster, and we'll get to him eventually, um, but he is a pretty big deal. Um, those of you who don't know, he was a big deal in the, in the MCU and the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show, whether it's canon or not, I don't know. But yeah, he's a huge rivalry with Bruce Banner and the Hulk, and so he's a pretty big deal compared to the other Hulkbusters we've seen so far. So I'm going to put him, um, I'll put him in B tier, I think. Yeah. Then we have the Glob, Ooh, don't get confused with the blob. Uh, the blob is a big, like, swamp monster, kind of like man thing in a way, but less supernatural, more scientific, like, waste, radioactive waste. Um, and he's a character who I don't think has appeared in a long time, um, but he was very formidable against the Hulk, and I'm going to put him in C tier because uh, he was pretty formidable against the Hulk, even though he's no longer a character as far as I know of. But yeah. And then we have the Glorian, who will come back more into prominence later on with another story with another character I'm bringing up. Um, I, don't really, I, don't, I don't know if Glorian's really a villain, but he kind of just works for a character that does more villainous things. Um, and yeah, he's a, uh, I don't want to spoil it too much, but he's a, um, like a herald type, type situation to a more powerful character. And he had a couple interactions with the Hulk. Um, for the Glorian, I'll put him in D, but his, his master will go higher probably. We have Goldbug, who um, doesn't really do much and is not that big of a deal character, but I'd probably say better, bigger than a deal than most of the other characters down here in FR, so I'll put Goldbug in D. Um, he got murdered by a uh, Punisher in Civil War, <laughs> but it's the Hulk list, so um, he fought Hulk a couple times. And he's kind of a reformed supervillain kind of since then, so yeah. We have the Gremlin, who I was mentioning earlier with the Gargoyle. This is the Gargoyle's son. Um, he was one of the, he's one of the first characters to actually defeat the Hulk. Um, and he had, later on had more prominence like on the Soviet super soldiers, uh, wearing titanium man armor. Um, he's been a pretty um, constant thorn inside of the Hulk for a long time. Um, but I'll put him in A tier. After Gremlin, we have the Grey Gargoyle, who was more of a Thor villain. And he had a lot of appearances on the Iron Man cartoon back in the 90s, so some people consider him an Iron Man villain. But he's fought the Hulk a couple times, and... Uh, Maybe not in his rogue gallery, but he's fought Hulk plenty of times, so we'll probably put him in, um, yeah, I'll put him in C tier, I guess, because there's a lot of characters in C tier, because the Hulk, again, has not, does not have a huge, um, rogue gallery, a huge expansive rogue gallery like Spider-Man does, so. Next up is the Guilt Hulk, which is like Devil Hulk is another one of the Hulk's six split personality things, and, uh, you know, when Guilt Hulk was introduced, that was kind of when I was starting to get, like, think they're going a little bit too much with Hulk's, um, personality, different, different versions of the Hulk. Because at that point, we had Smart Hulk, we had Savage Hulk, we had Mindless Hulk, we had um, Grey Hulk, and, you know, it's Joe Fix-It and all that. I think this is a little bit, like, jumping the shark a little bit with Hulk's different versions of the Hulk. But it might just be me. I might just be um, crazy. Um, then we have... Um, oops. Who was that? Who did I just move? Oh, okay. I figured it out. Next we have uh, Half-Life. This is a character whose power is he... Uh, if he, if he like, wraps himself around you, he like, absorbs your life essence. Which you, you're going to fight against... If you want someone's life essence and their power, you want to go against the Hulk. I mean, come on. Um, again, not a really big deal character. Um... I want to say he died in their confrontation somehow. Um, yeah, I'm going to put Half-Life in D tier, though. Then we had... I lost the where they were. There we go. This is the Harpy. Um, actually, a pretty big like, reoccurring villain for the Hulk, actually. Um, I mean, not an A tier recurring villain, but definitely I put, him, I put her in B tier. She'd actually make a really cool Marvel Legend. It'd have a really big female body to make the Harpy, and that'd be pretty sweet. Next up, we have another uh, superhero. Uh, sometimes ally of the Hulk, and um, but also big, strong... Um, hero who's a big antagonist for the Hulk, like something, or not big antagonist, antagonist of the Hulk, sometimes in, story, in Hulk stories, and Hulk's antagonist in his story once in a while. This is Hercules, the Greek god of strength. Um, yeah, Hercules is a pretty pretty powerful character, one of the only guys who can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Hulk and, and withstand it, but I think of all the rivalries we'll see on this, um, Hercules is the less 
the lesser um, Hulk rivalry. So we'll put Hercules in C tier. Um, next we have, we have Hot Shot from the Riot Squad. And the Riot Squad, really a bunch of no, not big deal characters. I heard they all had brutal deaths in Marvel Hulk. Sorry about the spoiler. I, didn't, I haven't read it myself. I just heard. And honestly, this character, um, if we if you have the, uh, the was it, um, whatever his name, I've got John Blake, his name from Eternals. Uh, he has a little finger blaster power. Um, you can use that finger blast for his for a hot shot here. That's what he does with his powers. But he goes in D tier because he's not really a big deal at all. Then we have Hulkbuster Iron Man, which is Iron Man, you know, but Hulkbuster specifically. And Hulkbuster Iron Man is definitely um, I'll put Hulkbuster Iron Man A tier because that's a, it's always a great fun interaction. It was big enough big enough deal to happen in the MCU even. So I mean, Hulkbuster Iron Man is a cool concept and a really fun fight every time. Then we have a character whose name is very unfortunate. I'm putting her in the same tier as, as Hotshot because uh, they're, they're on the right squad together and they're like always partners together. Uh, her name is uh, her name is Jailbait. Yeah, I have no idea what her power is, but I know um, that's a really awkward name. So I'm not going to harp too much on her. Then we have Jinx Slater, another guy who was charged with hunting the Hulk and uh, was part of that like really shitty run of the Hulk in the early 2000s. So I'm putting him in F. We have the Juggernaut. <laughs> um, and the Juggernaut, uh, another X-Men villain. Like we have Apocalypse and we have Blob down here. Um, however, the Juggernaut, has fought Hulk so many times and they're so evenly matched in their fights that the Juggernaut honestly is a A tier Hulk villain. Honestly, you can almost put him in S tier, but, but I'm not going to because um, this is not... He's going to be S tier on a different character's list, so he shouldn't be you know, S tier on the Hulks. Um, but yeah, Juggernaut and the Hulk, I, all, I always love the, the interactions Juggernaut and Hulk have. They've had so many cool fights and so many cool battles and it's always pretty evenly matched. Uh, we have uh, Klaatu, the giant like interdimensional monster. Uh, this guy's story is actually really fun. He's like a Moby Dick type thing. Um, and... Hulk tries to fight him, and Hulk can do nothing against this, this creature. Hulk's not Hulk's not the captain they have in the story; someone else is. But Hulk's helping them to try to fight this monster, and uh, Hulk ends up feeling bad for this monster. He ends up relating to it and help and help them breaks the harpoons and lets the creature go. And um, I think that's a really fun story. Um, it's only had a couple couple appearances, but I'll put him in D because I think that's a fun concept. Then we have Claw. Oh, that's not Claw. Claw, who is um, quote unquote the Hulk's Hulk, which sounds a lot like Devil Hulk and. Uh, Gil Hulk to me, so I'm just gonna put Claw in F tier because unlike Devil Hulk and, Cl and uh, Gil Hulk, who have really cool designs, um, um, Claw looks stupid. So then we have the leader. So says the leader. <laughs> I love that uh, that a uh, phrase of his. But yeah, he's S tier. He's the Hulk's arch enemy. I mean, maybe equally as much as arch enemy as Abomination is. Um, yeah, the leader definitely an S tier Hulk villain, no doubt about it. I love the leader figure we got a couple years ago. I'm super happy to finally get that. I mean, the old Toy Biz Leader figure was, like, good, too, but it's not um, as good as uh, the new Hasbro one. Then we have Loki, who um, actually hasn't had a whole lot of interactions with the Hulk, aside from, really, Avengers number one, where Loki um, tried to have the Avengers fight the Hulk, tried to get Thor to fight the Hulk, but really the Avengers teamed up, and, yeah, if it wasn't for Loki trying to make the, trying to brainwash the Hulk and trying to make the Hulk look bad, um, the Avengers were never formed. So, um, I'll put Loki in C tier for the Hulk. And then we have Madman, another... Um, villain that is just like the Hulk gamma ra guy gamma, ra gamma, radiated, gamma radiated into making him um, like the Hulk I said with Flux earlier he was lucky that he um, came on so early because he got a higher ranking or he got he doesn't get as much judge as much Madman oops Madman's actually a lot cooler than Flux much bigger deal than Flux um, but I'll put Madman in B tier I think yeah Madman's a really cool um, character for the Hulk uh, not really not super cool not super unique or anything but he's you know one of the earlier examples of just a Hulk for Hulk to fight basically then we have, speaking of Hulks or Hulk to fight, you have Maestro, Hulk from the future, everyone's dead, basically, he, he, yeah, he's a ruler of the Earth, he's kind of gone crazy, um, Maestro is an A-tier Hulk villain, who better, what better villain for the Hulk than the Hulk himself, right, um, I love the Maestro story, I was really, I was really disappointed by Maestro's figure that came out a few years ago, but his story is always really good, next up we have Mentallo, um, a really low-tier Marvel villain usually, he's really, he has a lot, like, good mental manipulation powers, and he convinced the Hulk, um, to go attack the Avengers, um, I want to say he worked at the, he was part of the Brotherhood at the time, and Juggernaut and Hulk went and attacked the Avengers, and yeah, um, Mentallo, though, is a D tier. And then we have Mercy, who's a character who, like, I can't remember what she wanted, she wanted, like, she sensed the Hulk's, like, strength and wanted him to help kill her or something like that, um, but yeah, she's, at least she's a unique character to the Hulk, at least, um, she's not, she's not, she's not a Hulk trying to fight the Hulk, you know, she's a character, her own new character, um, but she wasn't, she hasn't made very many appearances, if she appeared more, she'd probably be a C tier, but I'll put her in D. We have the missing, oops, the missing link. Um, another, like, big, strong monster for Hulk to fight. And uh, hasn't, made, hasn't made very many appearances. So, uh, the missing link is, I'll put him in D. So, not much to say about the missing link. Then we have MODOK. 
specifically shows a picture of Novak and him in a big armored giant suit. I saw this guy on the toy group outlining this is a HasLab. I think that's insane. Um, but yeah, Modoc, um, Modoc and AIM in general, I'd, I'd put in B tier for Hulk villain. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty prominent adversary for the Hulk. Part of the Intelligentsia alongside Dr. Doom and uh, um, the leader in Red Ghost. I didn't include Red Ghost in this list at all. Maybe I should have, but I did not. So yeah, that's... Let's say Modoc is a pretty big deal. Then we have Modoc again. This Modoc is uh, this girl named Kate. I can't remember her last name. But she was a love interest of Hulk, I believe, who was kidnapped by the Abomination, and then Aim turned her into a Modoc too, and her and Modoc teamed up and fought the Hulk. And I think she, I think her condition was reversed later on, I believe, I believe. Uh, but she only didn't do a whole, wasn't didn't appear a whole, a whole lot of times. But I'll put her in D tier just because of the personal connection type thing. Then we have the Mole Man, who is a Fantastic Four villain more so than a Hulk villain, and because of that, he's not going to rank very high. But the Hulk has done a lot of things in Subterranea. He has a villain who is much more unique to him. He also fights and is always in a rivalry with, with Mole Man over the ruling of sub, subter, Subterraria. Um, so, Mole Man, as a Hulk villain, will go D. We have Moonstone, who I think now is more, more prominent as a Captain Marvel or Miss Marvel villain. But she first appeared in a Hulk comic book, as far as I'm aware of, anyways. And uh, she's a pretty good fight for the Hulk at first. Um, we'll put Moonstone in C tier. Then we have um, Ogress. Ogress had a much bigger role in the Hulk... Um, cartoon in the 90s and she did in the comics she's part of the riot squad alongside uh jailbreak or jailbaits and hotshot so she's gonna go in d tier because again ogress is just another gamma radiated character who's made to fight the hulk and it's nothing super crazy uh here's the one below all who i believe never even appeared until immortal hulk and they made a hulk um the kind of, i know some kind of connection with the gamma monsters and like the underworld and hell and all that and uh i think that's dumb so one below all i'm gonna put an f people are gonna yell at me in the comments for this i don't care no one watches these videos anyways <laughs> then we have uh, Piecemeal, another early 90s character who was made, um, it's like a bunch of bunch of different supervillains all, all mixed together into some android type, like a super adaptoid type thing, almost. Um, I know he has saber-tooth hands, Atuma's, Atuma parts, um, Griffin's tail sometimes. I uh, can't remember all the different parts. I thought he was a really cool design. Um, I don't think he lasted very long, but I think he looked really cool. And um, he's unique looking, so like as a standout on a Hulk show, I'll put him in S tier. I just think he stands out and he's unique looking, and uh, he might not appear very much, but he... He looks kind of cool to me, so. And then we have Cyclop. Not Cyclops. Cyclop. This is a alien bug creature. Um, the Cyclopses used to, like, rule Earth, before, like, millions of years ago, before humanity, before humans even evolved. I'm assuming it's probably, like, a, it's probably, like, a, uh, like a Devonian age type thing. I don't know. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, Cyclop is a D-tier character. Um, he's fought the Avengers a few times as well, so I mean, I mean whatever, but he's, he fought the Hulk several times. Really powerful character. Um, he actually be cool in action figure form. Maybe I'll put Cyclops in C-tier, I don't know. Sure, why not? Then we have a guy, I can't say his name, but it's Q-N-A-X. Quinax? Quinox? I don't know. Uh, he's always been a good adversary for the Hulk. He's fought Hulk several times over the years. Um, I'm gonna put him in B-tier. Uh, that's not the costume I prefer for him. I prefer his, like, 90s costume he had. It makes him, like, look different, and uh, he'd be a cool figure to do, to have a, to have, he'd be a cool character to have a figure of. This is what I was referring to earlier, another one who's just like Flux, where it's just a another character who tried to be the Hulk and is um, just not the Hulk, Hulk with a beard or whatever. So um, Ravage, I think, is less impactful than Flux even is. So I'll put Ravage in F tier because I haven't, I don't think Ravage has even appeared since since then. So if he has, uh, sorry, I don't remember him. So then we have Red Hulk again, the same type of story. Um, someone wants to fight the Hulk, so they make themselves into a Hulk and Red tier Red Hulk, which is done better. Um, and because of that, Red Hulk, I will put in A tier. Because he was really cool at first when he first started. I think he kind of died down. His popularity so died down a lot later. But I think he's a cool villain, cool character in general, and a cool antagonist for the Hulk. So A tier for Red Hulk. Then we have Red King from the Planet Hulk story. Um, I'll put I'll put him in C tier because he had like, that one story, and then that's it. Red She-Hulk. Um, same thing as Red Hulk, but female. Um, fight, you know, you think she might fight She-Hulk more than Red than, than regular Hulk. But yeah, um, I'll put her in, in B tier. There's a whole lot of She-Hulk villains I didn't include because I want to do a whole separate video for She-Hulk eventually. Um, but yeah, I'll put her in B tier. After Red She-Hulk, we have the Rhino. And Rhino, um, again, Spider-Man villain primarily, uh, has fought Hulk several, several times. He's always undermatched. Um, I mean, he's always underpowered to fight the Hulk. Hulk's always way stronger than the Rhino. But there's one time Rhino got gamma radiated, so he had a better chance against the Hulk. And he started doing better then, but he still was weaker than the Hulk. And Rhino will be a B-tier Hulk villain. Then we have Rock and Redeemer, who really are like non-existent Marvel characters, basically. Um... It's just funny because growing up, I had these Hulk coloring books from the early 2000s. And there's a lot of 90s Hulk storylines, uh, characters in those coloring books. And Rock and Redeemer are on so many pages of those coloring books when I was a kid. So they always stood out to me. They always have been like characters. I'm like, oh, wow, they're a big deal with, they're a big deal with the Hulk, right? And I actually read Hulk comics and they, they're barely in them at all. Um, but because I know them so well from the, those, my childhood, I'll put them in C tier. And uh, 
it'd be really hard to make figures of rock especially but redeemer would be a little bit easier but yeah uh, it'd be cool to have toys with them and they're from the right squad as well i think, I think they rank a little bit higher than the other three right squad members i've already had up here um then we have the sandman another spider-man villain but this time he's wearing his more uh frightful four costume and uh he fought the hulk a few times looking like this and i'll put sandman in c tier and then we have sasquatch another he hero rivalry um i think sasquatch first appeared in the whole comic book didn't he and it's a character who's bigger than the Hulk. He's 10 feet tall. Like, he's significantly larger than the Hulk. And I hate his Marvel Legends figure because it's so small. It should be way bigger than it is, but it's not. And it bugs me out. But anyway, Sasquatch, I'll put him in B tier. They had a pretty fun rivalry. Um, Walter Lingowski and, and Bruce Banner are good friends. And then they both have these, they're both these big, strong guys with superpowers. Um, I think that's a whole fun story. And I, yeah, I hope we can get a better Sasquatch figure someday. That'd be nice. And then we have, I mentioned the Glorian earlier. But this time now, it's the Shaper of Worlds, the guy that Glorian works for, basically. The guy the Glorian got his powers from. The Shaper of Worlds first period in a whole comic book and he was um Shaper world's basically a scroll who has like the powers of a cosmic cube basically and uh he can create realities and all that weird stuff like reshape reality and hulk was one of the first characters ever fought him and uh yeah i think the shape of world is a uh, really, really cool looking character it's underrated i think um I he hasn't appeared more than he has i'll put him in seats here because if he's appeared more he could, he could definitely go higher but he's not appeared very often so then we have scar the son of hulk and another hulk for hulk to fight um really not anything crazy just this hulk uses knives and stuff but because He's, really, he's pretty popular and people like him and uh he's different enough i'll put him in b tier i guess his, his marvel legend is also one of the worst marvel legends of all time we need a new scar if people like scar enough then we have the soviet super soldiers nowadays people call them the winter guard um but soviet super soldiers um they're basically the russian equivalent of the avengers and they fought hulk pretty good pretty oftenly uh, the gremlin ended up joining the soviet super soldiers as titanium man and that was pretty cool um I remember this being a really good storyline. I put the Soviet Super Soldiers in B tier because it's a whole team versus the Hulk. I mean, that's pretty cool. It's always fun having a whole team fight the Hulk. Then we have is that Speed Freak? Speed Freak, another like a really fast character has knives and stuff on him. Um, didn't he's only I think he made his first appearance in the, in the late '90s fighting the Hulk, and then I want to say he died during Civil War when Nitro exploded because he was a bad guy who was hanging out with Nitro. And yeah, um, not a big deal character, but I think he has a really cool design. And I'll put him in C tier. We have Thanos. Thanos has claimed that the Hulk is one of the only uh, beings in the universe he's, he actually does not like having a fight. And I think that's pretty impressive, so I'll put Thanos in B tier. We have The Thing from the Fantastic Four, a character just like Rhino. Really powerful guy, but he's not really a match for the Hulk. Um, but they have had a really good rivalry since the 60s. Like, that was one of the first rivalries Hulk ever had with another hero, was The Thing. And because of that, I'll put The Thing in A tier, because The Thing is so... It, it, the Hulk and Thing, have, that fight is just so popular. It's, it's, a big, it's a big deal. Speaking of fighting other heroes, we have Thor, the God of Thunder, its fellow Avenger. And Thor will also go A-tier, I think, for the Hulk. Because, yeah, their fight is so iconic. You got a, you got a little animated movie, Hulk vs. Thor. I think it's very over... I think it's not as good as the other Hulk versus on that DVD. Um, so, yeah, Thor is in A-tier. Um, then we have a guy who's already appeared on this list. He's right here in A-tier as the Red Hulk. But even more so than that, he will go S-tier as Thunderbolt Ross. Because he is, like, the Hulk antagonist. Like, the leader is his arch enemy, yes. But... Thunderbolt Ross. Nobody is so adamant of trying to catch and defeat the Hulk than Thunderbolt Ross is. Like he's the he's the main like antagonist of both Hulk movies, basically. Um and in the comics for the past 60 years, like yeah, Thunderbolt Ross is definitely an S-tier Hulk villain. Then we have Thundra, who had a child with the Hulk <laughs> as Lilira or whatever, or Lyra. Um and yeah, she's a fought the Hulk a couple times because you know she likes fighting strong men because she's a very strong woman. And yeah, I'll put her in B tier. We have Tiger Shark, who is a more of an ally, an enemy of Namor. He saw Hulk several times, though, including on, on the uh, Offenders team, um, which is pretty cool. And Tiger Shark will go in C tier. After Tiger Shark, we have Trauma, another guy just like Armageddon earlier, whoever he is, um, from the Trojan alien race, fought the Hulk. Um, he was stronger than the Hulk. He was beating the Hulk in their fight, and then he ended up um, killing himself on accident. And so he will go in D tier. Then we have... I haven't gone F-tier in a little while. feels like that's pretty cool. Um, next up, we have Tyrannus. This is the Mole Man's adversary I was talking about earlier, how Mole Man and the Hulk um, fight over... Not Mole Man and the Hulk. Mole Man and another guy, who is Tyrannus, fight for control over Subterraria. Subter subter there we go. I didn't get the word out eventually. And uh, Tyrannus is more of a Hulk adversary than Mole Man is on average. Um, I don't think he's appeared a whole lot lately, though, but he, yeah, he definitely fought Hulk uh, several times. Definitely more often than Mole Man. I'll put Tyrannus in B-tier. He would have been a cool character to get um a figure of for my hulk, hulk collection here we go here's a team of four characters they tried to become the fantastic four but they just made themselves uh the bad guys <laughs> yeah ironclad x-ray vector and vapor and they are going a tier because they are the ufos 
And those are the UFOs are arguably the most needed um, Hulk characters in Marvel Legends. Like we need the UFOs. We've gotten so many Fantastic Four characters. We've gotten so many Hulks. We've gotten so few Hulk villains. But the UFOs, the UFOs are definitely at the top of my list of characters that I want in Marvel Legends. We need the UFOs. Um, I think that I think they're a super fun, super fun team. They're like the Fantastic Four, but bad. Like instead of the Fang, you have Ironclad. Instead of Human Torch, you have X-Ray. Mr. Fantastic is Vector and uh, Ms. Woman's Vapor. I mean, that's, I mean that's that's sweet. I think that's a really cool team. I think they're super underrated, and I'm, I'm really so shocked we have not gotten figures from them. And then we have the Wendigo. And Wendigo will also go in A tier. He's another big monster the Hulk fights, but he's not a Hulk monster. He's not a Gamma monster. He's like a mystical monster. So that's different and cool. And him fighting the Wendigo introduced us to the next guy, Wolverine. I didn't choose that iconic cover for Wolverine there. Uh, yeah, Wolverine and Wendigo fought Hulk. And Wolverine and Hulk have had that super huge, awesome rivalry for the past six, you know, not 60 years, almost 50 years since Wolverine first appeared, 74. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, you can argue, almost argue Wolverine's rivalry with the Hulk are more, are even better than the Thames and Thors. His cartoon was better, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, I'd put Wolverine in A tier. I think Wolverine is awesome for the Hulk to fight. Here's another character we got action figure of recently, last year. He was the first Hulk. He's the original Hulk. He is Zemnu, the living Hulk. A character that no one even heard of until we got a Build-A-Figure last year. <laughs> And uh, that's another, another figure that I like, but I wish he was bigger, because Zendu is another character who's bigger than Hulk. And, um, yeah, I would, I personally would have put him in A tier, but I feel like since people didn't know who he even was, maybe he's a B tier Hulk villain? Um, as far as Hulk villains go, I mean, I'll, I'll put Zendu in A tier, call me crazy, I think Zendu, Zendu is a very cool, um, recurring Hulk villain. Just like Wendigo is a big white hairy monster, <laughs> but he's an alien, a white hairy type alien from Titan. Or maybe he's not from Titan, but he's the living Titan. Whatever he is, he's cool, and I like when he shows up in comics. I heard he had a pretty good role in uh, Immortal Hulk recently, too, so that was pretty cool. And he also made uh, Red Hulk and Green Hulk merge into one character at one point, the Composite Hulk, so that's pretty sweet, too. So and then we have Zazax. Always going to be the last character to appear <laughs> in the Marvel Encyclopedia or the Marvel Handbook or alphabetical list. Zazax. Three Zs, AX. And Zazax is... I'll go with him. He's another unique character. He's a lightning electricity monster that fights the Hulk. And... As a character, I really don't know how they would make into an action figure. It's just made of just a bunch of like electricity. Um, really curious how they would do that in toy form. But yeah, so the Zax is A tier. So that's the list. That is the um, Hulk villain tier ranking list. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Call me an idiot for hating Immortal Hulk. I'm all for it. <laughs> um, but uh, otherwise, I've had a fun time making this video. Hulk's villains are a lot less um, interesting than Spider-Man's are, for example. Um, should I have a Doctor Strange video this week? Is Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness? Let me know. Or maybe I can rank multiverses. That would be cool. Anyways, let me know in the comments below what you guys want to see me rank next. Um, let me know how much of an idiot I am for ranking things in a way, in a, in a way you didn't like. And uh, until next time, catch you later.